In today's episode, we discuss rising tensions between China and US despite increased high-level exchanges. We explore key points of contention and where this might lead us. Join us as we speak with Professor Yan Xuetong from Tsinghua University, an expert in China-US relations. Do you think the US-China relations has reached lowest point ever? I think uh, that uh, really depends on what historical period you want to compare with. If you compare with the 1950s, when we were on the war in the Korea, and now the relationship is better than that. <laughs> but if you compare with our relationship with that in the 1990s, 1980s, even 1970s, and the relationship certainly is in the lowest point. Blinken said he will continue, the US will continue to do things China don't like. What does it mean? Does does it mean there is a gap between the U.S. US and it does? America has adopted a strategy against China uh, called as a small yard and a high fence. I think he referred to that. That means the uh, U.S. will continue to contain China's uh, technology progress by undermining China's uh, uh, international cooperation with other countries in the field of uh, uh, technology invention, especially in the high tech, including the chips and the, the other digital technology. In Chinese people's eye, the U.S. often does one thing and uh, do another thing. Yeah. And there is, has been quite a frustration in the public. Uh -huh. And do you think this hostility between the two peoples will make it harder to maintain? After China and the U.S. establish a formal dipl uh, diplomatic relations, and uh, we have experienced uh, several up and downs. This kind of uh, uh, disturbance always between the two governments. And uh, it's, uh, uh, the people at two sides still uh, have a good uh, feeling or the sense for the other side. Now the situation changed and the social hostility toward each other this is really uh, something very unhealthy for uh, the bilateral relationship. And uh, both sides, we can see populism is uh, very serious. And the populism means uh, xenophobia, the fear about uh, anything foreign. Now come to the U.S., they regard the U.S. as the leading power of the West or the foreign unfriendly forces. So that's why uh, the, the social relationship between the two countries uh, is really uh, getting to the low point. And uh, that means the social base for China-U.S. relationship has already undermined. That's why it's the China-U.S. relationship can now be expected to be improved in short term. How do you evaluate Biden-China policy? Do you think it has been consistent throughout his term? And if you were to compare his China policy to his predecessors like Trump and Obama, uh -huh. what do you think are the biggest differences and commonalities? Well, before he uh, took over the office in the White House, I said that his policy toward China will be tougher than what the Trump. And because Trump didn't use uh, collective efforts to contain China. That means uh, Trump adopted unilateralism uh, policy. That means uh, he contained China by U.S. Uh, uh, solo force. But now Biden and adopted a multilateral strategy. That means uh, uh, United American allies to contain China collectively. I think uh, Biden's policy and, uh, didn't change and uh, still continue what he adopted uh, when he uh, get to power. The containment policy against China and, uh, will, will last until the end of his term. Are we going to see a more hardline approach as the election year approaches? Certainly in election year, the policy will become uh, even tougher and uh, but this only in degree the direction won't change no matter is it getting tougher or uh, less tough the direction is to contain china and uh, mainly on the technology invention
Washington seems does not have many principles other than countering China. Do you think it's a fair characterization of the Biden administration? Certainly, Biden administration do not want to use the term containment, but then they said uh, they will adopt these policies uh, uh, protect uh, Americans' uh, uh, interests. But the wording are different, but the content is the same. And just like uh, they use uh, 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 nine, a rosy term to describe the <laughs> unfriendly policy, I think that will be the normal things we are going to experience or to see in the future. So let's move on to talk a bit about Taiwan. Actually, from my understanding, uh, Biden administration want to use the Taiwan to contain China. If China spend uh, more resources, energy, and uh, on the uh, Taiwan issue, and then China will have less energy or the, uh, or the resources uh, for other things. This is uh, uh, something, but not uh, uh, the, the key point. The key point that if the U.S. can uh, keep these uh, conflicts continue, and it will dramatically undermine China's international environment. And this kind of damage to China's international environment will have a strong impact or negative impact on China's economic construction. If we look at the trade relations between two countries, yeah. we will find it set a record high. Uh -huh. Can you explain the discrepancy? How can you pursue containment while trading with another country in billions of dollars? This strategy aimed at uh, contain China's uh, technology program. It's not uh, contain China's uh, uh, e economy. So that's why the U.S. Uh, continue to keep the trade for non-high-tech products. And so this situation will continue. And uh, this situation implies the competition between China and the U.S. are different from that between the Soviet Union and the U.S. So this is not a Cold War, and there's no absolute uh, isolation from each other or decoupling from each other. I think uh, for Chinese people, and uh, I think uh, we need to just uh, do our own work. If we cannot improve our domestic uh, assumptions, and we cannot uh, improve our domestic uh, investment, and uh, also if we cannot uh, improve our technology invention. No matter what kind of international environment, we cannot make this country strong. So whether a major power becomes strong or stronger than the others, and mainly depends on the domestic policies, not the foreign policies. On one hand, the U.S. says it wants a pro prosperous China. On the other hand, uh -huh. it's slap sanctions like the trip exports that restrictions on China. Uh, when they say the uh, prosperous, that means uh, your living standard. It doesn't mean that uh, your national comprehensive power. So when they try to contain China, and uh, the purpose is to contain China comprehensive power. So they, for a long time, they expected China to be a, a second Japan. You're rich and uh, only financially, monetarily, but you're not that uh, strong in terms of the military. So they want to have a military weak, but economically rich China.